Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and here I am with my little guy, Banjo, the Norwich Terrier from Queens, New York. People ask often what kind of dog he is, and he, he's a Norwich Terrier. If you ever see the movie Best in Show, you know God Loves a Terrier? That's a red in the movie Winky is the, the dog's name. Banjo is a black and tan. Um, the best. I'm obsessed with him, and he's the best. But you know why that reason why we, I have him here with me today is because he said he wanted to be in the intro. He's a little camera shy right now because his papa, Richard is not feeling so great. He's a little under the weather. Now, I don't know about you, but the thing that really gets me feeling way better when I'm feeling a little bit down is a big heaping bowl of a spicy soup. And that's exactly what we, yes, what we, yes, are gonna make today. We are going to make spicy dumpling soup. Think of it as like a hot and sour soup with wontons or dumplings in there and I'm telling you right now this is a spicy soup it is spicy but I'm gonna give you ways on how to not make it spicy or make it less spicy this is all gonna be in the recipe link in the recipe card at the bottom of that link so you're gonna want to check out all those tips there but you know it's all about right now making making Papa feel better right Binge? making him feel better and we're gonna do that with the most amazing truly lip smacking lip tingling Sinus clearing spicy dumpling soup, and it's gonna be one of your favorite things. It couldn't be easier. Let's just go right to the instant pot and go. Yeah, come on, let's make Papa feel a little better. There you go. What a sweet boy. Mwah. All right. <laughs> Okay, so a little disclaimer, this is a spicy soup, but if you don't like your soup spicy and you want a dumpling soup that's on the more mild side, I have you covered. Just click on the recipe link and then look at the recipe card at the very bottom and it gives you the instructions on how to keep it mild. But we're gonna keep this in true form of the recipe and we're gonna start off with a quarter cup of some spicy chili oil. Any kind will do, add it to the pot and then we're gonna give it some heat. Again, if you don't want this spicy, I got you covered in the recipe card. So coming down to the control panel, we'll hit that saute button, make sure we're on the high or more setting. Hit the start button if your model has one. If it doesn't, it'll just start in its own after a few seconds. And now once that chili oil is simmering and shimmering, we're gonna then add in between like you know, five to 10 ounces of shiitake sliced mushrooms, or you can use up to a pound if you want of baby bella or uh, white mushrooms that are sliced. I find they usually sell shiitake in like five ounce packages. I use two of those. Um, if you hate mushrooms and if they're not your thing, again in the recipe card I got you covered on how you'll alter this recipe. Okay, now we're gonna get in there and we're gonna saute our mushrooms in the chili oil for about three or so minutes. And then I wanna add in one tablespoon of crushed, minced, or squeezed ginger. They actually sell ginger in a bottle that you can squeeze. It's called Squeeze Ginger by a brand called Spice World and I love it. Add that to the pot. Looks like applesauce. We're gonna saute the ginger into the mushrooms. Now if you're not using the mushrooms, you're going to add that ginger at a different time. Again, that's in the recipe card. And you see, as we saute our mushrooms, they'll very quickly absorb all that oil and they'll begin to sweat after a minute or so. And they'll begin to get caked on to the bottom of the pot, but that's fine. That's all going to come up shortly. Okay, and after about three minutes, we're looking good. And all that caked on brown bottom from the mushrooms is going to come up now because we're adding in a quarter of a cup of rice vinegar. And I do suggest using rice vinegar for this. All right, and then we're gonna deglaze the bottom of the pot. You see how easy that's all gonna come up? All of those sticky brown bits from the mushrooms are gonna come right up. It's miraculous, really. Perfect. Now that the bottom is nice and freed and clear, we're going to add to the pot six cups of vegetable broth, as well as a quarter of a cup of low-sodium soy sauce. I use low-sodium for this because honestly, I can't taste the difference, especially when it's in the soup. You can also use tamari if you want to keep it gluten-free, and you can use coconut aminos if you want to keep it soy and gluten-free. And I also want to add in one teaspoon of white pepper. I love white pepper in really any Asian-inspired dish. It goes an extra long way, but again, if you don't want this on the spicy side, you'll leave that out. All on the recipe card, like I said multiple times already. I'm also gonna add in a 16 ounce can of bamboo shoots, or two eight ounce cans, uh, that I just drained. You don't have to add them in if you don't want them in there, that's fine. And it wouldn't be spicy dumpling soup without some dumplings, or wontons. In fact, they call them 
wontons and dumplings on here. All right, whatever. Now, I like to use the mini ones for this, if possible. You can find these in the frozen section of really any supermarket, especially an Asian market for sure, and Costco even has these. They're frozen right in the bag, and this is a one and a half pound bag. Sometimes you can find a one and a quarter pound bag. Either one is fine. I'm adding them all in there, though. And of course, you can use any variety, whether it's pork and vegetable, chicken and vegetable, just vegetable, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I've added my all these ingredients, and I'm just going to stir everything around in the pot. Again, these are frozen, and they're going to cook perfectly because that's what it does under pressure. The final touch here before we pressure cook is going to be to add in baby or regular spinach. Eight to ten ounces is fine. This is actually eight ounces, and that'll be enough. I'm just going to top it off here. It's going to come right up to the brim. Eight ounces will do the trick. I'm not stirring it, just gonna leave it there. It's just gonna cook down into nothing. Okay, and that's all I had to do before we have to pressure cook. So we're gonna take our lid, we're gonna secure it, make sure that it's in the sealing position. Okay, now we wanna go to the pressure cooking mode. Hit the cancel button and then hit pressure cook or manual depending on your model. Only wanna go for one minute at this, guys, because we have some wontons in there. They're gonna be pretty delicate after they get pressure cooked and they're gonna get totally heated up as the pot is boiling and coming to pressure. So one minute. High pressure, that's it. Now I like my spicy dumpling soups a bit on the slightly thicker side so that to achieve that, I'm going to make a cornstarch slurry and what I do is I take equal parts cornstarch and equal parts water, in this case three tablespoons of each, I usually use cold water, and then I have to create a slurry by pouring the water into the cornstarch and then we stir it around so it goes from a thick like consistency to a nice smooth one. Now the reason why I have to create a slurry is because it tempers the cornstarch. If I were to just dump the cornstarch as it is into like a big pot of hot liquid, it would just clump up like a cellophane ball and it, nobody wants that. We want it to be just like this. And now that was done pressure cooking, we'll perform a quick release. And our pin just dropped, so we're gonna take the lid off the pot. And then you'll see my spinach will have wilted down and I'm gonna stir my soup up perfectly. Perfect. Look at that. That's exactly why we only want to go for one minute. We don't want those wontons or dumplings to get overcooked. Lovely. All right, now I want to give the pot some heat because it's going to be time to add that cornstarch slurry. So coming down to the control panel, we'll hit that saute button to make sure we're on the high or more setting. Okay, and now that my pot's bubbling, I'm going to stir in my slurry. Perfect. It's going to be a nice thick soup, just how I like it. Awesome. Okay, final touches. First, I'm going to kill the heat. And I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Gives it a little bit of a sweetness there. Two tablespoons of sesame oil. A third of a cup of chili garlic oil. This is like the thing you see next to the sriracha and it has some red chili flakes in it, but you can also just use sriracha. Third of a cup, again, we don't fool around with the soup. Another quarter of a cup of the chili oil. It's gonna give it this lovely color. Again, you can leave out the spice. You don't have to add in either of those two things there. And I'm going to add in a bunch of scallions that I've chopped up and I've reserved some for topping. But I also like to give this soup some really pretty color with a tablespoon of sesame seeds. I'm using a mix of regular and black. Put that in the pot. Also, I'll probably top off my bowl with some. And now we're gonna stir everything around in the pot and you are gonna be left with the richest, most outrageous <laughs> spicy wonton soup. <laughs> Look at how beautiful. Okay, we're gonna ladle this into bowls and serve it up. And there we have it. A huge heaping delicious bowl of spicy wonton soup. Maybe top it off with additional sesame seeds. Some more scallion if you wanna go there. Voila. And this soup is here for the taking. All right, let's try this out. Okay, and here's my gigantic bowl of soup. I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Oh, it's rich. It's thick, it's just how I like it. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> wait, the wonton now. Oh my gosh. Mm. This is beyond anything I could have ever hoped for in this soup. It is spicy. It's gonna clear your sinuses up. If you love my hot and sour soup, just wait until you try this. This actually might take the cake on my spicy soups. Mmm. Mmm. 
This is a spicy soup lover's dream. Spicy dumpling slash wonton lover's dream. Now when I say it's spicy, it absolutely has a kick to it. It is definitely going down there, but is it unbearable to eat? No, absolutely not. If you're wary about that, however, just add a little bit less of the spice that I have in there. Have it at first, taste it, and then you can always decide to add more. Now you see how wonderfully thick and delicious this soup is? Perfect, I love this consistency, but if you want it a little thinner, just use between two, one to two tablespoons of the cornstarch slurry. That's cornstarch and water equal parts. So one to two tablespoons cornstarch, one to two tablespoons water, mix them together. I'm gonna start sweating when I'm eating this because I'm wearing a sweatshirt. It's cold out too, and I'm literally heating up just from eating this soup. Mm. If anyone doesn't feel well, give this to them. Hang on, actually, you know what? Richard's a little under the weather, like I said before, so we're gonna get him down here. And I, I, we'll see how he wants to. Let's check this out. Hey, Richard! So we're gonna see if this does the trick for him. That's a big bowl. It is a big bowl, but it's just it's for the presentation. Here, get in the camera. Oh, no. Even when he's not feeling his best, he looks great, doesn't he? Okay, so tell me what you think of this. Mmm. Oh, wow. It has so much spice. <laughs> Is it over flavor? No, it's so good. Can I open my sinuses? That's exactly what I was going for here. If you have a cold or if you feel sucked up, this soup is gonna, that's the remedy right here and it's gonna taste incredible at the same time and hearty. What do you think of the soup's consistency? Do you like how thick I made the broth? Or you yeah. think it should be a little thinner than that? No, I like it. It's thick, but it's not like, you know, you get hot and sour soup sometimes in this, and this. It's and too it's so thick and yeah. too like, gelatinous. Yeah. yeah, this is I think the perfect amount, but again, I use three tablespoons each of cornstarch and water, mixed together to form a slurry, but you can just use, like, like I said, two or even one if you want it to slightly thicker. It's up to you. But this soup, it's spicy, but it's gonna it's making it's gonna make you sweat. I'm telling you right now, it, you you can have that. It's your lunch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's not gonna be able to eat all that. I just know it. But I had to take a nice picture for the you know the Instagram photo. Anyway, there you have it, guys. It is so easy to make this soup. Every ingredient was found very simply at local market. And I'm like in a rural part of New Jersey right now, and it's I found all these things. So easy to find. And by the way, in case you didn't know, <laughs> I wrote some cookbooks. I wrote three of them. Actually, I wrote four of them, but three are available right now when this came out. The orange one's the original. It was the best-selling debut cookbook of 2020. The blue one's my lighter book, all lighter recipes. And the yellow one is comfort food, simple comforts. The fourth one coming out, that's going to be the green one, uh, this April of 2023, is shortcut. So it's all shorter recipes due to less ingredients and the flavor is still very very prominent in there um, every book has beautiful step-by-step -step color photos as well as a timing bar so check that out thank you so much again for watching and the next time you want to warm up without even having to turn the heat on in your house just make some spicy wonton soup look at this right from the ladle mmm mmm oh that's zesty it's gonna go really nice with an icy coke I can tell you right now